First up. All right. We got a lot of news. Okay, this is actually an updated product. It's not like a totally new news. You're like, what's different here? This is the RGB matrix hat for Raspberry Pi. So what's different? Well, it now supports 64 by 64 matrices because we've added an E-pin. There's an address E-pin. And uh, when we first made this hat, we didn't know that such a thing existed. And then we got some 64 by 64 panels. And we're like, oh, we should update it. So we did. And so if you look uh, on the PCB, there is now a little thing that says pin E. And it connects to pin, I think, 26. And then uh, if you use our um, tutorial, you'll be able to use it with all the old kind of displays as well as 64 by 64 pixel displays. So even better. Okay, next up. We've got this round thing. What is this? Is it like a, a happy pocket? Yes, it's a happy pocket for your electronics. It's uh, a round, kind of like a zipper disp um, you know, holder. We actually don't know what this was for originally but um, it's actually like perfectly sized for a circuit playground express. So you wanna go to the overhead? I, can I think they made it for us. Yeah, I mean, it's like kind of perfect. You can put your uh, circuit playground on one side. And then what's nice is over here, there's a little like pocket and uh, you know, you can have your headers and your batteries and your cables, and then you zip it up and it's nice and safe. Uh, it only comes in Adafruit black right now, but if people really like these, we'll get them in other colors. Okay, thanks up. Uh, we got this uh, Molex Pico Blade connector. Um, this is the same connector used on our Halloweens for the speaker. It's nice because it's not the same as the JST. It's a little skinnier and smaller, um, but it still works pretty well. Uh, it's it snap fits in quite nicely, and um, we have this cable now, so we have the speakers attached to this. But maybe you want to connect your own speaker to the Halloween. Um, these cables are low cost and easy to use. They're polarized, and as you can see, one color is red, one's black. That's pretty much it. Molex Pico Blade, a standard connector, which is very small. All right, so we got this. You actually had weatherproof enclosures about this size, but now we have one with glands. Yes, those two things sticking out are called cable glands, and they allow you to create a um, like an airtight or watertight um, enclosure. Um, so the, the enclosure itself has a gasket, but now you can have gaskets for cables. So I'm just showing you here, you can fit a Raspberry Pi Zero in it, or a Feather, or um, a Metro. It doesn't fit like a full-sized Raspberry Pi, um, just so I know people are gonna ask. Um, it's not that big, but it's good for small portable projects. So I thought I'd just show how the cable gland works over here. So, you know, you've got your, um, your weatherproof, you know, um, setup, and maybe you've got, you know, your um, Feather, you get your feather huzzah inside and it's wireless, it's got battery power, and then you have a sensor on the outside or a cable for recharging it. Um, well, you know, you put the cable through this gland and, um, and then you see there's a little uh, O-ring here with like these little fingers. And when you attach this nut on, it um, makes all the fingers um, hold the O-ring tight against the cable. So even if the cable is a little bit lumpy, it'll still give you a nice, um, connection that's watertight so you don't have to worry about uh, water ingress through there and if you don't need um, water tightness of course it's also just great for just cables coming through anyways so either way you get two cable glands and of course you can drill more holes add more glands but two cables is a pretty good um, setup so you can use it for antenna for power for solar whatever good for outdoor projects and also comes with nice mounting flanges so it's got flanges and glands um, this Double A battery holder is pretty cool. Um, we were, we, you know, we got a sample of this and we're like, well, you know, we're not exactly sure exactly what it would be good for, but it's kind of neat because it basically, as you see here, it has this like metal knife switch built into it. So it's, it's you know, it has an on off switch, but it's a very like tactile mechanical switch. And so we think that this might be good for like education or maybe for using these with like squishy circuits or something where you want kids to really understand like, okay, here's the switch and when you open and close the circuit, uh, current can flow or not flow and then, you know, you get this light up LED or not. So, you know, I just have it here, but it's basically your standard AA battery holder. And then, yeah, you just hold it down and now it's lit and then you release it. So there's a little slot, it slots into the spring to make contact. I don't know, it's kind of neat. Yeah, also good for prototyping if you're doing something where you just want to have a, you don't want to do this with, turn it on or off if you're anything on software you just want to have yeah. on and off really fast it is also a nice big switch if you want a big on off switch for your battery holder yeah. this is junky okay 
Um, we also have um, another set of headphones. So we have a headset that we've had in the store for a while. This one's interesting. So here, you know, most headsets are like quote unquote Apple style where they have a middle button and then an up button and a down button. And this one is a little bit different. Um, can you go back to that one, two? Yeah. So this is the big, the big deal here. So there's that little phone button. So it's still a pause button so you can like play pause. But instead of up and down buttons, there's a potentiometer inside of it. There's a slide potentiometer. So that's not a mechanical button above it. That's actually a slide. So if you're using, um, you want to use headphones with something that you can't adjust the volume easily um, because it doesn't have a potentiometer built into it. Um, this is just a, a cheap hack. You plug it in and the potentiometer is built into it. Like it, really old headsets used to have like a little no, you but mean the ears like that better because you're not just like pressing the wrong button like oop what click, oh, click, too click, loud, too loud, too loud, click, too quiet. Down, down. Yeah. This is like very tactile. It's easy, and of course it works with everything. And it's got the comfy earbud style earbuds. I'm not gonna show this on the overhead because these photos yeah. are way better. But yeah, it basically has the pause button, but also an analog potentiometer. So I think very handy. And it's got like the standard TRS for you know Apple and Android devices. So if you don't want buttons, use this instead. Um, we've got this book, Grace Hopper, Queen of Computer Code. Um, this is like a lovely illustrated book about Grace Hopper's famous uh, Navy, ooh, don't remember her title, but um, the story of her life, you know, how did she become this famous programmer? Um, how did she join the Navy? And how did she kind of like bring programming um, to the military and to the masses? So these are some beautiful uh, illustrated images of this, you know, very famous pioneer in technology, there's a, the Grace Hopper Conference that you see mm -hmm. every year for women in technology. Um, this book is great for a young person who maybe wants some inspiration for a... Uh, her interviews are awesome. After you read this book, have them look on YouTube to see some of her interviews. They're, they're just hilarious. She's, um, she's very plain spoken, um, but very, very smart. We also have the Inky Fat. Um, this is, uh, we've had the red, black, white, and yellow, black, white versions of this. Uh, e-ink display. Now we have just the plain black and white display. Uh, it's a 2.13 inch display. Um, it shows a little bit of grayscale, black and white. Uh, easy to use. Comes with Python library for Raspberry Pi. I have a very quick demo on the overhead I can show um, of it flipping between um, the Adafruit and then it's like an, a hello badge. So you can see it's much faster than the red, black, and white. It only takes about two seconds to flip between images. It doesn't take, you know, like it takes like 15 to 20 seconds on um, the red, black, and white ones. And what's nice, of course, is you unplug it and the image stays. It's e paper. Wow, amazing. So uh, great for low power use or for outdoor use. You got two uh, ball bearings. These are used for robots usually as like a third caster wheel. So we have one that's a 20 millimeter tall. Um, this one fits perfectly with our uh, purple robot as seen here. And we also have a shorter one, so about 16 millimeters tall. Um, both are great bearing wheels. Um, you know, one's just a little bit smaller than the other, so depending on what you need. I'll just show them on the overhead in comparison really fast and then move on. So this is the smaller one and this is the bigger one. So you can see, um, the size comparison here. And um, in the in the uh, product pages, we um, have the um, distance between the holes. So if I don't remember exactly what it is, but you know, depending on how big your robot is, if it's smaller, you can use a small one. And it's also like, you know, four or five millimeters shorter as well. So pick whichever one works best about the same price and they work almost similarly. You just bolt it onto whatever you want. It doesn't come with hardware. Use any uh, M3 or 440 screws to attach. Ooh. This is uh, one of my favorites. This is a 400 milliamp hour battery, and you can see it has a shorty cable. And why has it got this shorty cable? Why is it the special size? Well, it's specifically designed to fit inside of feather sandwiches. So um, the battery is the right thickness and width. So it fits right in between uh, the feather headers on your favorite feather, and the little cable just curves around, plugs right in. You see not a lot sticking out there. And then um, put an OLED or uh, some other feathering on top, and now you got your portable um, feather package with built-in battery charging and a battery that's tucked in the middle too. Mm, so feather sandwiches. Feather sandwiches. Okay, next up. Ooh, uh, we got this one in the store real fast. Eight box nine. So if you did not subscribe to Eight Box, or maybe you did, and you're like, I want another one. Uh, you can. This is a good Halloween present for someone, by the way. This just is just great pick up for Eight Box Nine. It's like, here you go, Happy Halloween. It is Halloween themed. Of course, it's good year round, but you know, if you got Halloween, so it comes with a Halloween. The lens, neopixel strip, speaker, lanyard, servo PIR sensor, LEDs, 
um, with little mounting thingies, and of course that 400 milliamp hour battery and some other cables and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's got like a dozen projects you can build with it from the very easy to the more complex. It comes with the eyeball code already on it, so you can just use that. You get this. You get this, everyone eyeball. Out of the, out of the box. Yeah. Okay. Um, so pick that up, and we'll have Ada Box 8, which we've skipped. We'll have that in very soon. We kind of rushed this one through because we thought we wanted uh, people would want it for Halloween. And then the star of the show is the BMP388. So you probably used the BMP085, 180, or 280, and now you're like, wait, there's that three? Yes, there's a third generation a barometric pressure sensor, even more precise. I mean, this one, they're actually saying this is a great altimeter for drones. It's kind of what they're, they're kind of aiming it for. But, of course, it's perfect as an altimeter or barometric pressure sensor. Uh, I think it's um, got eight Pascal um, uh, relative uh, precision, which means it can do about one half meter of precision. I mean, it, it's, the noise level is at 0.1 meter, but it can, can keep steady at about a half a meter. So you have great for altitude um, projects or drone projects, quadcopters, anything where you want to uh, keep steady above ground. Um, but also, of course, great for temperature sensing. It's got, a, a, I think, 0.5 um, degrees centigrade temperature sensor accuracy and, of course, barometric pressure for um, weather measurements. Okay, Mr. Products. Whew.